Welcome to another of our Digesting Lent series. And today we've arrived at Monday Thursday. And this is a special Digesting Lent video on the subject of the Simnel Cake. The Simnel Cake was a cake that was traditionally eaten on the fourth Sunday in Lent, Mothering Sunday. The idea was that live-in servants would have an opportunity to go back to their mothers. And uh, in those days, often food by that stage of the, the year was running short. And so what better way to greet their parents and their mothers in particular than the high calorie Simnel Cake to keep them going. Simnel cakes have been made since the medieval times. The name Simnel comes from the name for a fine flour. But there have been various myths around how that name actually came to be. And one of them is rather fun. It's connected with the way that the cake was prepared. Now, these days, I don't think that's the case anymore, but there was a stage where a Simnel cake would be both boiled and baked. The idea was that there was a couple called Simon and Nellie. And they were having a discussion with each other about how they were going to make their cake. Simon wanted to boil it, Nellie wanted to bake it. Anyway, uh, after threatening with each other with various kitchen utensils, they eventually uh, reached a, an agreement that they were going to boil and bake it uh, in swift succession. And so it was named the Simnel Cake. Three places claim they invented the recipe for the Simnel Cake. Now, they're different recipes, but each of them, not unsurprisingly, omit milk and butter because it was made during Lent. Shrewsbury has the oldest recorded Simnel cake. Then there's Devizes in Wiltshire, where they have a Simnel cake, but it's always in a star shape. And then finally, there's Berry in Lancashire, which has cemented itself as the most popular origin of the Simnel cake, perhaps because Back in the 1800s, they presented a 32 kilogram uh, Simnel cake to Queen Victoria. We didn't get our cake from Shrewsbury or Devizes or Berry. We got it from a certain high-end supermarket and it has to be said, given the sticker price, it probably is not the kind of thing that the live-in servants would have been buying for their parents. But still, it's a great effort nonetheless. Now, of course, the distinctive thing about the Simnel cake are these master band balls on top. 11, that's 12 for each of the disciples, minus one, that's Judas, who betrayed Jesus. And on Monday Thursday, of course, we're very much mindful of Jesus's betrayal. But then frankly, we remember as well the other disciples who didn't do a whole load better, whether it's the sons of Zebedee, James and John, who fell asleep while Jesus asked them to pray, or Peter, who not only fell asleep, but then denied Jesus so flagrantly, even after he promised him he wouldn't. As we approach Good Friday and Easter Sunday, let's remember those times where we failed Jesus. Perhaps it's been out of laziness, like James and John. Perhaps, like Thomas, it was out of doubt. Perhaps, like Peter, it's out of fear. Whatever it is, we recognize that we're not the people that we should be. And yet there's something deeply encouraging as well about those disciples. They were far from the heroes that we might have made them out to be. And yet it's for those people that Jesus went to the cross. He died and achieved forgiveness for that exactly those kind of people who weren't able to stick with him. And let's not forget that this is not the end. Beyond Easter, the disciples were given the Holy Spirit. And this rather unruly and not particularly effective band of followers turned into the leaders of a worldwide movement that has never been matched in size. And Peter particularly came to oversee the whole of the growth of the early church. An amazing transformation made possible only because of the Holy Spirit of God. Like those 11 disciples, if we have only our own strength to go by, we make mistakes and we fail. 
But with God's help, with God working amongst us, we have hope to do amazing things for him. All right. It's been a while. I wonder that I'm going to be surprised by the cinnamon cake. There it goes. Mmm. That's good. Ten quid. No, it's worth it. That's a really good cake. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Marzipan. Love marzipan. Good. All right. Which disciple did you eat? <laughs> um, it was Thaddeus. <laughs> Poor chap. Poor chap. He, we he wears blue, so, um, you know, that was pretty obvious. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that was really good. That was a very good cake. Yeah, he went to the right supermarket. Mm -hmm.